Jonah is the most controversial, unbelieved book of the Bible that there can be. By Christians, by scholars, by pastors, by Sunday school teachers. We'll look at that in a moment. We're even going to look to we take our time with this book. I want you to go to John 7. John chapter 7. Verse 52. And this is described. They're, they're talking amongst themselves, the Pharisees. They're all upset at Jesus. They got a powwow. By the way, you can't find conference in the Bible anywhere, or count, or you know, a group. So John seven fifty two, and they answered, said, "Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look." For out of Galilee rises no prophet. And every man went to his house. Go to Second Kings. Second Kings fourteen. Verse twenty five. Second Kings fourteen twenty five and he Restored the coast of Israel from the entry of payment unto the sea, the plain, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he spake by the hand of his servant, Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, which was of Gath Heifer. Gath Heifer is a territory in Zebulun in northern Israel. So the Pharisees, well, search the scripture, there's no prophet that came out of Galilee. Jonah. Jonah. They didn't even look to Jonah in the time of Jesus. They don't look to Jonah in your seminary. I was in a, in a well-known Baptist church here in Florida. Well-known, the pastor and everything. One of his students got up and went through the book of Jonah and came up with one of the heresies. I have fought other Christians on the book of Jonah. So Jonah is of Gath Hefer of northern Israel, Galilee. Jonah means dove. D O V E. Amittai, his father, means faithful is Jehovah. Faithful wasn't Jonah. Back to Jonah. Maybe we'll get to the book. Jonah, about the 8th century. Jonah preached in the city of Nineveh. Nineveh at the time was a major city to the Assyrians. They were cruel, like I told you, warlike people, like I told you, long time enemy of Israel. Get that. This is why Jonah didn't want to go. And then, number two, not only were they enemies of Israel, they were Gentiles. The Jews are very prejudiced against Gentiles. Go ask Peter. I want you to go to Cornelius' house. Lord, uh, I, I'm under law and I don't have anything unclean. Remember the sheep? Remember when Jesus' his own hometown, he's speaking to him, he says about Naaman. And he talks about that widow woman, that Elijah. And they got all ruffled on the feathers. Why? They were Gentiles, not Jews. Uh, centurion walks up to Jesus said, my, my servant is sick needs help. Jesus like, alright, let's go. No, wait a minute. Hold on, Jesus. I'm not worthy for you to come underneath my roof. 
I got a man, he says, go. I, I tell him, go, he goes. I tell him to come, he goes. <clears throat> Jesus just speak the word. Jesus says in front of all his people, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. They emphasize war, scenes of execution, impalement, flaying the skin off prisoners, beheading. And Job was reluctant to go into this infamous city. Now, it wasn't capital yet. It wasn't the capital. Now, here's the argument. They believe that Jonah could be a parable. That's right. It's not a parable. Thank you, Lord. It argues, now they argue that Jonah is fiction. A fable. Made up for a theological point of view of God's attitude towards the Gentiles. That's scholarly, I'm going to say it, BS. That's what I think of the scholars. That's what I think of these educated morons who don't know the Bible. They don't even know which Bible to use. So, five considerations. Jonah was real, real historical. He was a real prophet according to 2 Kings 14.25. The, the book of Jonah portrays Jonah as, as flawed. He's a sinner. He ain't no, this fairy tale, wonderful, great. <laughs> okay. Number two. Jonah is part of a collection of 12 minor prophets. You know why they stuck him into minor prophets? Because of that Gentileism. And they don't believe him. And sticking them in the 12 minor prophets, the prophets and prophecies were genuine historical prophets. So the Hebrews put in Jonah in the minor prophets said he is real and his prophecies are real. Third, the miracles found in the book of Jonah are not impossible. For, for a not impossible God of the Bible. Matter of fact, you know, the miracles found in the book of Jonah are very little, little, little compared to all the, the miracles of the Bible. They're just not believed. And then four, Jesus in Matthew 12, 39 to 41, Luke 11, 29, 32, we'll probably look at those, spoke of Jonah being in the fish and preaching to the Ninevites as real event. Jesus said, it's real, the fish is real, the preaching is real. And the repentance of the people are real, giving a strong rebuke to the Hebrews, the Israelites. And to realize the events of this book that we're going to talk about, that people don't believe, that Christians don't believe, Pastors don't believe. Sunday school teachers don't believe. Your seminaries don't believe. The Southern Baptists don't believe. The, 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 the colleges don't believe. You are outright calling Jesus Christ a liar. And you are denying the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we'll look into that later. You are in great danger. Because Jonah will point to one of the greatest events ever to happen in history, the death, burial, and resurrection. So Jonah, chapter 1. We're not going to get very far. Now the word of the Lord Right, so it didn't start off once upon a time. There was a there was this man that lived in the woods. The word of the Lord came. 
That's not a fairy tale. I don't think any of the parables say the Lord, the word of the Lord came. Unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, again, Jonah means dove. Amittai means faithful is Jehovah. Jonah will, will, will prove to be unfaithful. Arise. You know what the Christian needs to do? They need to get up. Couch potato Christianity today. They'll get off the couch because the guy's running with a football. But they won't get up for God. They won't get up for Jesus. Go! Oh, that's a famous word. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. How come we see go and we got Jesus telling us go preach the gospel and you got the gospel which is unbelief in the book of John? Go to Nineveh. There, it's a Gentile city. It's on the east bank of the Tigris River. It became the Syrian capital after 705 B.C., well after Jonah's day. It's about 500 miles northeast of Samaria. Jonah, hopefully you know the story, Jonah wanted to go to Tarsus. Now many believe, we don't know exactly where it is, but many believe Tarsus is Spain, or thereabouts. From now, it's five, over 500 miles from where Jonah is to Nineveh. If he were to arrive, because he didn't arrive in Tars, uh, Tarsus, if he arrived in, in Tarsus, it would have been 2,000 miles west of Israel. Not Nineveh. 2,000 miles west of Israel at another 500 miles. He was over 1,500 miles away from where God wanted to if he had gone where he was going to go. So, Jonah will say a big, fat no. And you know what the Christians say today? Go to all the world and preach the gospel. No! Yep, that's what I said. You know what they say instead? When you come to church, you come to church, that stupid dumb bird, you can't get church, you can't get church, you can't get church. It's not what Jesus said. You're actually doing a Jonah. You are going on the other side of what Jesus said. You are doing on the other side of what the Lord said. The Lord said, go. They say, come. There's a big difference. When, when, when the story of Noah's Ark, God said, come into the ark. He didn't say, come to church. He says, go. Go into Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it. Don't cry. Be loud. You're too loud. You're turning people away. So that's a, so that's a Jonah with the prophet with an attitude. To cry against it. For their wickedness is come up before me. Uh-oh. You know what God said about Sodom? He says, the cry of Sodom come up to me. i got to go check this out. And then he sent two angels and the city was destroyed. He got word up in heaven that they're building a tower. i got to go check this out. 
and then he diversed them all over the world. Nineveh's getting wicked. Wicked. I'm going to send him a preacher one last time that I'm going to destroy you. That's what the message was. I'm going to destroy you. You see, before God casts that judgment, before God destroys, God sends a man, not a woman, and he warns you. But, but, that's a Christian word today, but, going all the world and preach the gospel, but, my preacher says invite him to church. He only says invite him to church so he can head count you and report back to his council. And if they did walk the aisle and came to there, they only head count you so he go back to his people and say, look how many I had. Right? Or he just may, listen, I've been to church down south of Florida. The most southern part of America i ever been in. You'll get up to the altar and say, I have to say this prayer. Pastor, where do these people go? I don't know. Bring more in. What about the ones that... Uh, listen, I've been in enough churches. I've seen it. I know it. Just because your pastor's fooling you, he ain't fooling me with a King James Bible. See, you go but in God. It's not nice to butt God. Jonah rose up. Hey, well, God told him to rise. To flee. God told him to go. Jonah, flee. Big difference. On the Tarshish. That's where he's going. From the presence of the Lord. Go to Nineveh. Jonah said, I'm going to Tarshish. God, you go to Nineveh. I'm going the complete opposite direction. To go to Nineveh, he would have to get on camels, asses, maybe horses, walk it, whatever, wagons. To get to Tarshish, he would have to get it by sea. From the presence of the Lord. He didn't want to work with God no more. He didn't want to be with God no more. He didn't want to do what God told him to do. He went down to Joppa and this begins the going downs of Jonah's life. In this book we'll find that God prepared. We find that Jonah went down to Joppa. He went down. That's not a good idea. You know what's happened to churches today? They're going down. And they think they're getting up, but they haven't read Revelation 3. He went down. We don't have Sunday night service no more. You can go lay down. We, and the pastor don't need the Bible. He puts his Bible down. Doesn't bring his Bible to church. You can put the hymnal down. We don't use the hymnal no more. We'll push play on the player. The only thing we don't get down about is get down on the knees praying to God. He went down to Joppa. Should have been going up towards Nineveh. He found a ship. 
He was looking. And he found. You don't find something you were not looking for. Going. God said go. He didn't say going. Go to all the world and preach. Well, I, I plan on going. You going to tell your neighbors about Jesus? No. Ship going to Tarsus. Again, a lot of believe that's Spain. And if you look at the map, the Mediterranean area from Joppa, from Israel to Spain. And then you look at the Tigris River. There are two different opposite directions. You know, a lot of these churches today, they're going complete opposite direction. Against God. You know what? I was, I'm going to assume that Jonah thought he's doing perfectly well. Hey, i got to be doing well. Here's a ship. Is that what kind of ship I was looking for? And I've got the money, so God's got to be blessing it. And look, listen, we're only three three verses. Look at what God said. Look at God's point of view. And look at where Jonah is. God said, go, Jonah fled. God said, Nineveh, he's heading to Joppa, going to Tarshish. He's not go, he's going away from God. He paid the fare thereof. Many, many Christians pay the fare of rebelling against God. And then they make some kind of excuse on how they're walking with God and doing right by God. In actuality, they're sinning against God. And when you call it to their mind, oh, no, 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 no. Or just leave me alone. I want to do what I, I want the Christianity I want. I'm not going to offend anybody. I'm going to be nice to my neighbor. I'm going to be nice to the people. I'll give them the four spiritual laws. How about rebuke and tell him, say, listen, if you don't repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. Well, you can't tell them that. They'll get upset with you. They won't like me. They won't like me. I don't care what they, I don't care they like me. I've got Christians who don't like me. Because I speak the truth. Paul said, hey, I speak the truth. Have I become your enemy? Don't think if you're going to lie, they're going to love you because they're going to hate you to work because they know what the truth is. You ain't fooling them. The world knows better. He paid the fare thereof and went down. He go down to Joppa and he went down into the ship. Down. To go, go, okay, here's a go, with them unto Tarshish. God said, go to Nineveh, he's going to Tarshish. That's not what God said. Go into the world and preach the gospel. Will you go to church with me? That's not what God said. My preach. I don't care what your preacher says. Sit in the back row of your church 
Keep your eyes open, even though he says all eyes closed. It, it, it's amazing how they'll say, "Keep your shut your eyes." Why? Well, like what's the big secret? And when you sit in the back row of the church, look around and see if somebody's counting heads. There's somebody doing it. You know what happened to David when he took the census? Even his own military leaders, like uh, uh, Joe, Joe has, David, there's so many people, and, but you know, in the king's world. Well, you know, the book of Acts is that, you know, a thousand was added to the church and all that. That's the Holy Spirit counting, not the men. You want it to be somebody counted so you can have we counted. So you you will give logic, you will give reasoning, you will give an excuse for your sin. That ain't gonna cleanse you, that ain't gonna get you a pardon, that ain't gonna please God. He goes down with them unto Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord. This is how angry Jonah has gotten. You want me to go to that dead dog city? There were dogs. Remember what Jesus called that woman? You know, people get upset they use a certain word today. Jesus called that woman a female dog, she was a half breed Jew. Thou shalt not give the price of a dog. You know what that was? If you got money from a Gentile, don't you bring it to the temple. That's just as bad as getting money for a whore. If a whore got money for her sexual pleasures in bed, God says, don't you bring that money to the, to the temple, and don't you bring that money from the Gentile. That's one and the same. Now, we will learn if the Lord tarries from Job's, Job, Job, Jonah's own testimony. The prejudice he has for the people, the Gentiles. And I will, if I forget to tell you then, I'll tell you now, just in case. I do forget things. There are Christians, there are unsaved people that get truly and honestly saved. And a Christian will get mad. I've seen it. How can that person get saved? What about the people I'm praying for? I've, I've been praying for that guy, I've been working for that guy all these years, and he witnessed it, and he got him saved? No, 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 not he, God did. I guarantee there are Christians out there, especially pastors, that w w the things I say, the things I preach, and the things I do, I wish that guy never got saved. Because they don't want to hear the truth. They're just like the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees in Jesus' time. There's only one way we can get rid of this Jesus. Let's kill him. There's only one way to get rid of Paul. Let's kill him. I wonder what Christians think about me. Here is a man that is angry with God, and he thinks he, if he gets into a ship and heads to the other side of the world, remember, there's no America. It would be almost to the fact is he's heading to the other side of the world. Spain. Think about it. Think about a map back then. Jonah is, I'm going to the other side of the world. I'm going to get away from God. Look, look, look. He went to Tarshish, the other side of the world, the known world. 
from the present. So if I go down the other side of the Mediterranean Sea, God won't be there. <laughs> you know a lot of Christians think? I go to church Sunday, God's there. Sunday afternoon, he's not with me at the chicken place. He's not with me at Monday. Oh, only by special powers of prayer, if I need God, he'll come down. That's what Christians, some Christians think. When you think God's in your church, you're ridiculous. You realize if you if you are living in sin, you're backsliding. And if I come walking up to you, do you realize that God is now in the presence? Especially if you're saying where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. If we're both saved, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. God's there. There is no hiding from God if you're saved. If you're unsaved, there's no hiding from God. Didn't we just read in Amos that you can go bomb the sea? You can go as high as the heaven? There's another prophecy that you can dig, uh, I think we're ready. You can dig yourself into hell. I'm going to get you. There's no escaping God, but I want you to see, I want you to see that Jonah is angry. Jonah doesn't even want to be in God's presence. Don't talk to me no more, God. Because I'm going down, I'm going down, I'm going down when God told him to go. You know why a lot of Christians are upset and angry and lying about themselves and their marvelous great lies? It's because God told them to go, and they're going down. They're going down. They're going down. They're not listening to God. Remember that message I did today? God puts the roadblock up. He puts it. Stop, that's it. That's the furthest you're going to go. 